Taylor Swift's success is is mind boggling. Like it is, it is. She sold out the Blue Jay Stadium in Toronto for five shows in like a day. That's three hundred thousand <laughs> people in a in day, five. and it's like a thousand dollar ticket. How is that? How I do? You know what I mean? Like I don't even how 15, what fifteen one point five million million people. The math is not adding up, but it seems beyond, it's beyond, it's way beyond Michael Jackson at this point. You realize that, right? I think I, I think I get it. Please explain, brother. So Taylor Swift is relatable. She's not the world's greatest singer. She cannot dance at all. So I think that allows a huge population of younger white women to see themselves in her. I see myself in this very mediocre singing. I see myself in this very mediocre dancing. That relatability across a wide swath of population drives these huge mammoth like followings. Think about the world-class performers that will dance and sing Taylor Swift under the table that don't have a modicum of her success. All of them. <laughs> he said, said all of them. He said every single one. one. The nigga pop locky on the corner just like, you know, blows Taylor Swift out of yeah, the yeah, water. the nigga with autism that just be out on the corner just in traffic, <laughs> just rapping to himself just <laughs> every single day. All bars, yeah. though. You know, you bars. You might be right, man. It's a red flag. That's the yeah. kind of shit that I like about Rick and Morty, <laughs> the character study and the aspect of it. I, I don't watch it to laugh at all, quite frankly. Really? If I laugh, that's like, that's like a bonus. And with that being said, welcome everybody Ooh. to Waving the Red Flag, the number one dating relationship, Rick and Morty and Beyonce appreciation podcast in the entire solar system and known parts of the universe. It's your boy, Josh. It's Alvin. Uh, Eddie couldn't be here with us tonight because he's actually out living his deepest dream of replacing Will West in Jungle's next music video. <laughs> So, you know, we'll see him next week, but never fret. We got one of our first original guests who played a role in one of our very first viral videos on TikTok, Canada's favorite colored comedian, your boy, Abbas Wahab, back for another one. Drink style. What it do, what it do. Drink Your style Canada champ, don't know. even fuck with me. They don't even fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> what was the video? I don't even remember. What happened? It I was don't the um, shit either. I don't know. No, nah, it was man, damn. Um, and my, and this my nigga don't remember neither. This nigga no, <laughs> no, I was about to. Say, lies, I lies. was about to say, nah, my memory is supposed to be bad. Nah, it was the one where we talked about um Jeffrey Dahmer, and like being in prison. Oh, like a, uh, we, we don't. No one yeah, suspects yeah. a black psychopath. Yeah, yeah it was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you know how Ted Bundy got bitches? He would be like fucked up next to a car, be like, can you help? And they would come help. That That's already, it wouldn't work for black guys. In the dark at night, can you help? No, nigga, right. they're off, you know? It wouldn't, it wouldn't even <laughs> work. I thought you were giving me a Shay Shay level intro. I was like, oh shit. Hey man, that was, that, hey, that's what I do low key, just a little bit. You know what I'm I know. Saying? I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna dish on the, the comic community and like, let us know some shit, like, let us know, man. You know, is Kevin Hart really a piece of shit? Like, do you got the inside scoop? <laughs> Imagine, I'm like, guys, listen, for, for me, based on me watching his movies and following him on Instagram, this is my take on Kevin Hart, all right? This listen is about to be careful. our Cat Williams episode. I know, exactly. Yeah, yeah, fuck Kevin. Yo, you guys watch, uh, did you guys watch all of the, the Tsunami episodes that came after it? Monique and Bruh. Terry Crews and shit. Everybody's trying to speak their truth now, goddamn. And it's, oh my God. And half of it is like, they bullshit. Like, you know, people are just like, they... They own insecurities that they think are like their truth, which I'm not. Man, hey, I ain't here for no smoke, but it's a little, it's a little weird. Some of it, it's like, yo, nigga, I, you, you lying, kind of. I love, I love in that episode with Cat Shay. She's like, damn it, man, Cat, no, nobody gonna come on yeah. now. Cat's like, are you kidding? They all oh, coming. <laughs> they all coming. This, we, you about like, to be in a whole nother solar system with this one. <laughs> and he was right. Like he made, yeah. he was right. Apparently, per Shannon Sharp, he made more money with that video and the aftermath of that video than he's made. You know, his entire his highest earning NFL career. Exactly. That's ridiculous. Is, is what he said, which is That's why. ridiculous. Mm. I just think it's incredibly dope that after you like get done with like a certain point in your life, you can transition into something like even more, that you would never expect to transition into and to have even more success. Like from going playing foot professional football to being like a media personality. Yeah. That's what that Travis Kelsey is doing right now, bro. Mm. He's producing he's producing some film. He's building his cachet outside of the game slowly but surely. So it's like, even if that, you know, that Taylor relationship comes to an end, he'll be able to like, 
He'll be he'll relay yeah. his way Come to on. to like a you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Because he's part of the dynasty, whether it ends now or not. He got a piece of it, you know what this I mean? Nigga, this nigga Travis better do his best to lock Taylor Swift up, man. Man, Buddy, fuck all. I like, mean, well, not fuck everyone, all that, but you know, I'll be happens. retire. I'll be retiring next fucking year, bro. Like, yeah, just tour managing for her and shit. Oh yeah, like just that. Just keeping tro- real trophy close. husband, keeping <laughs> fucking trophy, yeah. trophy yeah. husband, keeping a real. Super Bowl champion. Yeah. Travis yeah. Kelsey's trophy husband to, to Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift's success is is mind boggling. Like it is, it fucking is fucking mind boggling. I cannot wrap my mind around how huge like, she man, is. Like I didn't even realize it until my buddy told me that she sold out the Blue Jay Stadium in Toronto for five shows in like a day, and I'm like, but that's three hundred thousand people. He's like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, that's 300,000 <laughs> people in a in day. Five. And it's five. like a $1,000 ticket. How is that? How? I do, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even. How? 15, what? 15, 1.5 million, million people? Or 15 million? The math 1. is 5. not adding up. I don't. Uh, I just don't understand it. You know what I mean? And I don't know if as a black man, my mind has that capacity to understand it. But it seems beyond. It's beyond. It's way beyond Michael Jackson at this point. I don't think it's beyond Michael Jackson because I just think the nature of. I think the nature of celebrities changed, right? Like I think I think celebrities are so much more accessible that I don't know if we'll ever have a Michael Jackson again. But I just in sheer drawing numbers like that, I agree with that. I agree with in terms of like sheer drawing like sales charts populations coming in she goes she's dating him now the team has four times the revenue or some shit like that she, like she what? earned like billions for the nfl like they have like a like a, a estimated figure of how much she earned the league just by going to those games consistently it's billions That's just show, exactly. just showing up to games and just being happy and on the sidelines the in the Kansas box City. whatever you know crazy it's crazy and the fact that they actually won the super bowl is like just of like just out of this fucking world bro out of this world I know. he should have proposed but they man. were they were favorites they were favorite to win at the beginning of the uh, season but you know like they had they had issues like the, all the drops with the wide receivers you know they were inconsistent they lost some games they should have won but you got a team with patrick mahomes you got a team with arguably the best tight end of all time on it you always got a shot you got the best offensive coach in the league they always had a shot they were never true underdogs at any point you know what i was looking when i was watching that super bowl every time they brought taylor you know they would cut to her mm-hmm. box she's got like all her <laughs> friends every surrounding her. <laughs> i loved i loved her friends would like you would just see because we have four seconds where they show you her in the box right mm-hmm. and in that time you could see the dynamic her friend would like be grabbing her arm trying to take a selfie <laughs> you know what I mean? like, yeah just like trying to pull her everyone's trying to get her in yeah this bitch in her life and some fragment or another yeah. i'm like wow what a fucked the, up life that is that's some next shit. the thing that got me is that she's so famous is that other famous people would be in the box with her and they wouldn't even acknowledge that there were other famous people like standing right next to her like it was one game this may have i don't know if it was super Bowl, but it was one game where blake lively was in the box next to her and they were just like chilling and it was one where like ice spice was in there and like the com- oh, yeah. the oh. commentator the commentary team didn't acknowledge that shit at all it was just like okay ice spice is right there okay blake lively's right there but taylor swift is dancing Holy a little bit shit. taylor swift that's, is, that's the super bowl yeah, taylor swift is doing the the swag surf right now that's all we care about i hated it for that because it's like oh my god you bring in such mayonnaise to the culture like i Oh, it it just it it just it does not sit right with me when I see such uncoordinated stiff ass swag surfing. I I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> but I mean, hey, you know, you do what you want to, but don't don't try to appropriate that shit. Like, oh, Taylor Swift creates the driving the driving the uh, goddamn surf. Netflix needs to do a three part docu series on this just just to help people like me understand. The come up and the magnitude and how I got to this because it's that it's in a proportion now where that I've never seen and I can't make sense of. I think I, I think I get it and I think it, and I think it's and I'm a I'm a I'm a draw some conclusions here. Um, and I, Please and I, explain, and I, and I prom- brother. And I promise I'll bring it home. But I think it's very similar to Drake's early success and why he continues to to be a juggernaut in his own right. So Taylor Swift is 
relatable, right? So I don't think she's yeah. I don't think she's super talented. She's not the world's greatest singer. She cannot dance at all. So I don't think she's like a phenomenal performer in any stretch of the imagination. So I think that allows a huge population of younger white women to see themselves in her because it's like, oh, I see myself in this very mediocre singing. I see myself in this very mediocre dancing. And I think that that relatability is 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 poignant. And I think that's what drove a lot of Drake's early shit. Drake's early shit was like, I'm a sad boy because girls be doing me wrong and shit, you know, Marvin's Room type shit. And I think that if you draw that parallel across a lot of music, that relatability across a wide you know, swath of population drives these huge mammoth like followings. How you cultivate and move as your fan base ages just gives you additional longevity. Because I think Taylor Swift and Drake have both done that really well. Like I think Drake's fan base was different when he was, you know, coming up early. And I think he's changed with them. And I think Taylor Swift has done that same thing to remain equally as relatable. You might be right. Her lack of rhythm is making her just more relatable to people. One hundred percent, man. Just like one hundred percent, thousand percent. She's a human. Yeah, bro. Like, huh. think, think, think about the think about the world class performers that will dance and sing Taylor Swift like under the table that don't have a modicum of her success. All of them. <laughs> he said, this motherfucker said all of them. He motherfucker said every single one. one. The nigga pop locky on the corner, just like you know, blows Taylor Swift out yeah, of the yeah, water. Yeah, the nigga with autism that just be out on the corner, just in traffic, <laughs> just rapping to himself, just <laughs> every single day. All bars yeah. though, you know. You bars. might be right, man. Nah, bro, like, cause like Taylor's. I mean, it's crazy because like Taylor Swift is so goddamn big. She got Travis Kelsey in trouble. For goddamn appropriating a, a, a fade, a, a, a common oh, fade. Oh, that haircut. blew my mind. That was the stupidest shit I've ever um, seen. That's that's stupidity. That how how you can't you can't fade from a two to a one now without without uh, having a black friend co-sign. Yeah. You need a, you need <laughs> a black, <laughs> a black friend. To go. Are you fading into another length of hair, motherfucker? Oh my god, I ain't never seen no shit like that. How dare you shit on slavery? What like what? <laughs> But yo, man, y'all trying to get into a, let's get into a quick topic. Oh. Let's get it. I got one. I got a good one. Uh, I wanted to talk, get your perspective of boss on like comedians being held to like a different standard. I think it's all bullshit, man. I think it's all. Oh, I think, let, me, let me shut a video. Let me shut a video. My brother, let me shut a video real quick. Oh, God. I, I don't know. This thing works, brother. <laughs> do play. Do play. I know, right? So I'm trying to. And this is from, oh, my God. All right. From the good brother Willie Mack, who has also been on the podcast before, but he posed the question of why are comedians held accountable for the material they write on stage and get blacklisted while writers of actual like uh, prominent television shows can write about anything they want to and nothing happens to them. They get awards, you know, prizes, all the accolades for writing potentially extremely offensive stuff. But comedians are held to a different standard. Well, there's a disconnect, right? Because a writer writes it, someone else takes it on the screen, someone else says it. First of all, the disconnect makes it so you could stay away from it. If it don't do good, eh, it was just written. If it does do good, it was mine. But on stage, it's you. And one of the tricks about comedy is that you have to make it look, you have to hone your comedy to a point where it looks as if it's coming off the dome right now. It looks as if you're just saying this in the moment. It looks easy. So people really take everything you say for face value. Yeah. They take it as they see it. So you could say some wild shit and people are like, he meant that. He said it just like that. Whereas a writer wrote it and now there's all these steps in between before it makes it to its final place. So it's a lot easier to wash your hands of it is what I think. But also at the same time, all of these people that are getting canceled are bigger than ever, right? Like the Shane Gillis, for example, SNL hired him and then fired him when some guy showed that he did like some Asian accent on a podcast. And now he's the fastest growing. He's like the Drake of, of com like Drake 10 years ago. Yeah. That cancel shit ended up being the rocket fuel for his trajectory. Where I, you see that a lot of times, you know? Is it? Uh, nobody, sure. Nobody's ever successfully been canceled other than like Weinstein. A, a Kramer, Michael Richards. Yeah, cr like Kramer, <laughs> Weinstein, yeah. R. Kelly. Yeah, Weinstein jail canceled him. Yeah. Epstein died. Yeah. So like, like and, and R. Kelly obviously wasn't going to get away forever. Yeah. Like, 
the cancel culture is like when people say, oh, this person got canceled, it's like you said something and you had to deal with consequences of what you said. Like, that's not cancellation. No, if anything, dude, honestly, it's uh, it's magnification. It's the opposite of what we thought, because here's the thing. I didn't even know the name Shane Gillis True. until I read the headline comedian Shane Gillis fired from SNL. That and is I searched, interesting. Who is Shane news. Gillis? That is, Who is Shane Gillis? Everyone I know, not everyone I know, I'll repeat that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are in a similar boat as me, whereas the first time someone gets canceled is when you actually find out about them. Cancellation cancellation for comedians is the best possible thing to happen to you. So do you That's think a comedian take. do you think comedians That's weaponize that do you think that comedians do that I, I i have personal comedian friends who are doing that right now i have <laughs> i have a friend of mine who you know he's in canadian comedy i'll just avoid the name for what i'll say here he purposefully gets venues so he'll do a lot of edgy comedy right mm. uh by you know a lot of comedians do similar stuff but he'll purposefully get liberal or community-based venues he will book them because oh, he knows shit. that before the event takes place that body is going to search his stuff and they're going to write him a letter being like we do not agree with your blah 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 and then he posts that and then he goes there guys another venue just canceled on me but don't worry i'm gonna and every time he posts his interactions skyrocket people want to see him more and he gets these venues on purpose because it happened to me one time. And then he came. He's like, bro, I've been doing this on purpose for a minute. Because I found out. Because I, I went to. There's a thing called NACA in the States. And Canada has a version of it. Uh, National Association of Campus Activities. You go. You perform for these people. And then they, they get all of their performers for college campuses for the year. So I did Canada's version. And I did some trans joke. And they got very offended. And they wrote me some email saying like. It was very we were disturbed by your performance. There was we had a meeting afterwards because of your thing. We do not want to blah blah blah. And I posted that email. And bro, I, my surge of tickets for the tour I had going, buddy, it at least a couple grand in tickets in 24 hours. Just like just, just cause as soon as people see like, oh, you're being publicly like uh crucified, it adds value to comedy. So cancellation adds value to comedy. I'm realizing that now. You want to know what's side. crazy? I actually remember the post when you did that shit because I follow you on IG. And I rem it was a while back. And I remember when but you, you remember posted it. Right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause people are like, yo, fuck them, stay up. Blah, blah, blah. I got stay you. I'm gonna see you in Ottawa. I'm gonna see you in Montreal. It was like free a bus. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they were like getting shit. I had no idea. Uh, and then I, I went to my buddy. He goes, buddy, I've been getting these venues, these liberal ass venues, because I know they're going to send me these rejection letters. I post them. I grow stronger. It's crazy times. Damn, man. that's some sick shit. If you, I mean, not that you're like purposely in, engaging in it, but that's some sick shit. Like when you take advantage of that dynamic in a group of uh, a marginalized people, a group of marginalized and oppressed people for your benefits, where it's like, oh shit, this works. Let's keep doing it. But then it. here's the thing. But here's the other side of it is that now you'll have a lot of comedians knowing the nature of cancel culture and shit. They specifically create bits about like what's the hot thing right now? Yeah. What are the fucking trans? I'm going to give every angle. Trans, Trump, uh, w w what else is there? You know what I mean? And they'll specifically target these groups of topics to create bits about because they know – like. It's similar in the world of podcasting. You know, if like if Trump got arrested yesterday and we're podcasting today, we got to talk Trump. It's going to be in the thumbnail. Right? You know, it's going to have. It's going to be in the thumbnail. Yeah. It yeah. has to be. It's yeah. Going, yeah. So comedies, it's in a similar space. But the problem is, you you take times to cultivate a joke and hone a joke. So now you have a you have an agenda of only creating jokes about the things that were trending two months ago, and you're not really speaking to your truths. It kind of becomes a little fabricated. So it's a dangerous road, but it could pay off. And it's, you know, it's a double edged sword. You yeah. know what I mean? And my thing with. So one, I do. I do want to circle back around to, to that, because I think your insights on that are extremely interesting. But before I get too much on a tangent with the post, I think that there's a disconnect between what comedians get backlash for and what was called out as what like writers talk about. Right. So like comedians can talk about assault and violence and like all that kind of stuff. And that be completely fine. Comedians can also make jokes about 
you know, the LGBTQ community and that'd be fine. What happens is when you start talking about their personage, you know, in a way that I think like Dave Chappelle has consistently done or when you start talking about them being, you know, satanic the way that like Cat Williams did on like the Rogan podcast or whatever. So I think that what people do is they're having these, they're conflating two different things, right? Like writers can talk about a lot of stuff that was listed and comedians can also talk about those things, but it doesn't talk about the things that comedians are actually getting canceled for because nobody's ever ever really been canceled in, in comedy uh other than kramer like i i think i think we probably could search real hard and come up with like five six people but the names of people that you associate with with, with cancel culture are like like louis ck is touring you know what i mean like he's back yeah. like like you know carlos mencia is probably one of the only people but it wasn't cancel culture it was the people that got him because he was exposed as a joke thief and then the kind of the the world of comedy kind of got privy to that yeah. and got smart to it and just stopped his draw he stopped touring less and blah 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 yeah. it all kind of just fell apart but even but, but cancellation by the by the by the system yeah. has never really happened and even and even with joke thieves i mean like fuck amy schumer still booked and busy like you know what i'm saying like i mean really? than ever oh, yeah. yeah like i mean but she she's got a brand so now netflix amy schumer does like amy schumer presents and she just she'll choose you know, like when someone gets a, co a government contract <laughs> and, the, and they're a middleman yeah. and they subcontract. Yeah. That's what Amy Schumer is for comedy now. So Netflix is like, you're a name, women, yeah. And she gets three, four people that are on the come up. She gives them 10 minutes a piece. They give them a little money. Snoop Dogg did the exact same. A lot of these people have done the same thing where they just use their brand and they're kind of not really doing but comedy. But Snoop is, an, is, is a goddamn household treasure. You know what I'm saying? Like, the man's yeah, a national no treasure. No disrespect to Snoop you know? at all. But yeah, like yeah. Snoop, Kevin Hart, well, you know, I know, I know people go, oh my God, Kevin Hart. But Kevin Hart, like you said, I think he's doing the same thing. Snoop, definitely. He's been doing that for years. Snoop is more internationally famous than Jay-Z, or basically like a lot of our like American like superstars. Like Snoop is more internationally famous than a lot of Snoop Dogg is Michael Jackson right now of the world. Like you can go to the fucking Amazon and then be like Snoop Dogg, they go, oh, oh shit. Bling, Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg with D-O-D-O-D-O-G. You know what Beautiful. I mean? Oh, yes, that's yeah. me. That's me. Everyone knows Snoop Dogg. Yeah. yeah. He's like Coca-Cola. Uh, man, you know that nigga can fight? Just a random fact. Damn right he can. Yeah, he said because uh, Wiz Khalifa, yeah. like he's his, he's his uncle. I don't know if he mm. says that kind of like just black culture thing. Yeah, no, they, like, they're he's not everybody's related, uncle. But yeah, he's yeah, everybody's <laughs> uncle. uncle. He's the original <laughs> uncle. He's a proper hood dude. Don't forget that. You know, yeah, I know Long he's with Beach Martha and Stewart kind of and shit, shit yeah. like that, but he's a lanky. I bet you can box. Well, it's like that nigga. No, it ain't just like street fighting. Like I seen him like actually training. Like current age. Like throwing hands, like in a sparring match. That's it's crazy. like I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to. Nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want no parts of that. You guys see this Jake Paul, Mike Tyson? I saw the headline. I can't wait to see that shit, man. I can't wait to see that shit. Jake Paul's gonna win. Me too. But it's gonna be I, hilarious. I know. It's gonna be hilarious. Jake, you think Jake Paul gonna win? Yeah. Oh, because he's he's gonna get Mike Tyson's gonna have like a stipulation, like if you hit me, if you hit knock Jake out, you lose ten million. You know, it's going to be a huge purse for both of them. And Mike's going to have to play the game yeah. just to get the maximum money. But it's also like, I wish he just goes, fuck it, and just like turns it on and just finishes it. Like the Mike. So yeah, but he'd be fucking up so much money. I don't think he would do it. Yeah, that's, that's interesting because I would very much so like to see the old Mike Tyson's personality come back in a fight with Jake Paul. See, here's the thing. It's like, bro, that old school warrior, a true warrior that yeah. went to war versus like a, a new age person training. And they went to war like this. Like Mike Tyson went to World War One. He came home. He went to World War Two. He's a veteran, you know, yeah. like you can't in the in the in the gym. You can't recreate these conditions. There's nothing Jake could do to get him to the level. Like forget the body. Mike Tyson wouldn't even have to work out. It would just be one round of him being like. Go. And I think Mike Tyson would win if it was like none of it's this bullshit. It would just be straight up vicious and savage and ass whooping. Like, exactly. I mean, just, like you just power punches to the body. Forget cardio one month. Exactly. Just fucking <laughs> come back. Yeah. I told you I was going to bend you over and make you my lover. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like. Don't fuck you till you love me. Yeah. <laughs> And for and for people who don't know like old school boxing man like I like I watched Hitman Hearns and like and like Marvin Hagley like not that long ago and 
these were just motherfuckers that was just fucking like punching each other in the face, like in the, you know what I'm saying, like it, like like no footwork, no yeah. Footwork. Defense <laughs> was defense was sleep that fight, man. Like these motherfuckers was was just like punching each other. That's just like not what boxing is anymore. But like you know, Mike Tyson, people always talk about the the power, but like he definitely brought an element to the defensive style that most heavyweights like oh, never the had. Yeah. Like all that kind of stuff. Yeah, cuss. Oh yeah, yeah. he brought it, man. Yeah, but it's like you put Jake. Now it's all that shoulder. Yeah, that shoulder uh, shit. Mayweather, that shoulder. That thing Detroit that... shit. Yeah, but it's like <laughs> yeah. you know Jake Paul isn't ready for that mentality. You know that that a Mike Tyson had because the the whole boxing even even if he was playing this straight right even if he was doing this in like a real fight environment the environment is just so different than the environment that created what Mike Tyson like used to be. That's what I'm saying. Like. He came it just up doesn't old exist anymore. World style, like the Romans, like something else. Like he came up in a way that was like, it doesn't that this yeah. upbringing. It doesn't happen anymore. It's old world, and you can't recreate that. You just can't. It's like a a fighter pilot that went to war has confirmed kills in the air versus like the 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 brightest space cadet. You yeah. know what I mean? And even the guys that that like were transitional, that I think probably still embodied some of that. Like Jake Paul, not fighting none of them, man. Like put like put. Put put Jake Paul in the fight with fucking Andre Ward right now, like just do it, just make it happen. It's it's theatrics. Yeah. It's just it, entertainment, you know. It's kind of a buzzkill, but you know Nate Robinson had to go get that money, right? I know. And speaking of theatrics and entertainment, we got to take a quick pause for the calls and pay some bills real quick, like. And you want to know how we're gonna do it? That was very good, Josh. That was very good, Josh. That was. I got you, my brother. Thank you for recognizing the greatness of Boss. You asked the question earlier off, uh, you know, on the live. Yes, we do have a card game, and it's called It's a Red Flag. So, good people, if you're looking to spice up your game nights, your date night, or just your regular conversations with your friends, family, girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, they, them, you know what I'm saying? If you're trying to get a little close to it, just talk a little something with, kick some game too. Make sure that you pick up a pack of it's a red flag sponsored by your boys waving a red flag podcast because these 50 plus prompts will have you and yours having crazy conversations from dusk till motherfucking dawn but at quick because these cards are still on pre-order we technically don't know when we actually will stop selling them because you know Ooh. we're a very small business and uh you know logistics but thank you all so much for everybody that supported already caught the pack and um yeah so go and you can go <laughs> to shop.wavingaredflag.com and pick up a pack today. Technically pre-order. But again, shop.wavingaredflag.com. Make uh, make your order on pre-order today. We'll get that thing out to you ASAP. Um, All you had to say it was a very small business. Damn, nigga. This nigga just like took us down a couple notches. I mean, look, it's three, <laughs> this look, it's three niggas in this bitch, okay? <laughs> it's three Last niggas in this bitch. Yeah. That's very... Yeah. Yo, t- t- take one in the middle. Read it. What, oh like, no, well, I got I you. I got yeah. you. Like, you see, yeah, you jump. I want to hear what, what one sounds. Yeah, like. no, we want to play the game. I, real I might quick. get one. Shit, I might get one. Shit, hey man, support the calls, baby. Got that. I gotta. I'm gonna give it to people and be like, you don't have these. Yo. Everyone's getting yeah. these. And they're like, oh fuck, right. okay. <laughs> Yo, these shits oh, almost shit, got okay. me canceled one time. <laughs> yeah, the same what? owners as Cards Against Humanity. Right. Same owners. Oh shit, what? <laughs> All right. Oh, let's see here. Ooh, okay. All right. So, is it a red flag? If they mention that all their exes were abusive or crazy, man, do another one. <laughs> I mean, I, that that is a good one though. That is a good one. I think if it's all over wishes. three, if it's over three or four, then it's a red flag. But if it's been like you know, if it depends on the age of the person drawing that shit or answering that shit. But yeah, it's probably you, right? It's always I mean, you. Okay, so here's my here's my thought again. You got 10 X's that are all nuts? That are all, every single last one of them is crazy. I'm going to yeah. have to say, well, it's a, it's a bit of a red flag. I'm going to be looking at this person like, mm, I don't know about you. Because I'm not hearing, and this is not to victim shame, victim nut, because I know it's a, it's, I, and it's a, it can be a touchy topic. There's nothing anyway. wrong with a little victim shame every now I mean, and then. Well, I mean, hey, whoa. <laughs> every now whoa. and then. I know. <laughs> The people like you, Abbas. The people like you. Don't don't fuck it up. <laughs> it's a very small business. It's a very small business. As a treat, you can victim yeah, blame every 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 week. You get a little victim blaming as a just treat. A little, you know? Just a ten. Understand just that a, this is a very small just business. A tinge, a very, very <laughs> very small, small business, bro. Like don't we ain't we ain't that big for you to hate us yet. But I say that's a red flag for sure. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying though, like 
if you if every single person that you've dated and you claim that every single person that you mentioned in a relate in a in a conversation, oh my God, he was such like he was so abusive or he was such a manipulator. Oh, he was so controlling. Every one of them. And I'm not hearing like, no, like, well, here's what I did in this relationship. Or like, I know I could have did some things better. Like, I wasn't perfect either, but I just hear they was to blame. They always pointing the finger. I'm like, yeah, you, you, you're not somebody I want to like, probably want to fuck with long term. So I, I agree what? that it can be a red flag, but I'm looking at it from a different angle. Because I think that in the world, there are enough abusive people where like you could, you know, a, a person in the dating pool probably could find, you know, five consecutive people that were abusive emotionally, you know, physically, you know, spiritually, all that kind of stuff. I think the red flag for me is that you're potentially not dealing with the the root causes on why you continue to let those kind of people into your life, which is which is again not to be victim blaming, but it's also like there, there are certain things where it's like you do have habits that you tolerate based on certain, you know, deep held beliefs and habits that you've cultivated that started from something that usually isn't your fault. But I do think that at some point you have to make some decisions on how you want to conduct your life and live healthy, pro social and all that kind of stuff. But I do. But I do also think that people can 100 percent have like a string of consecutive like abusive people that has nothing to do with. Yeah. Them lying or all that kind of stuff, but it's like I cap it at three, yeah. like four, five, six, seven, etc. In a row, you're either magnetizing them, or you don't possess the correct filtering abilities to get them out of your shit early, right? I think that's ultimately what I'm saying too. Yeah, like I think I'm so, like, like, yeah. so. Then that that falls on you, right? After a certain point, I would say you have to have some responsibility on 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 improving this. And that'd be my thing, because like every, I mean, because it's once again, because it's not like a fucking you know bash women or. We're not even it's not even about women like because like hell men are in abusive either relationships way, yeah, too or everybody can yeah. be can find themselves in an abusive situation or a string of them but it's not to victim blame but there is a such thing as hey after a certain point where you kind of go through things you got to be able to suss out certain uh red flags or certain patterns and habits within people that might be abusive or not might not be conducive or maybe you just internally like i almost said might like somebody who might not treat you the best because you don't think that you deserve better but that's still at the end of the day that's something that you have to fix and if you're going into another relationship with a new person and they are not abusive or like they actually could be good for you one you might not really appreciate them like you should when you have a shot at someone who could actually be good for you or two you might come across as that crazy person who's who's Everybody they dated has just been, you know, batshit crazy to them. And like, oh, my God, like, I don't know why. I just attract all these dirt bags and I can't do anything about it. Men suck, but you're the good one, though. Or three, you act in a way that makes them act in a way that treats you shitty. So then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you're like, I'm going to be shitty in a way where you're shitty to me because I feel good in that shit. You know, that is also very, that is that is also very much so a thing. That is also very much so a big thing. It was like chaos, and then they get chaos back, yeah. and then they're comfortable. Yeah. They're like, oh, okay. There's chaos now. This is like an agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some people are like yeah. that. Some people are they, yeah, man. One, man, I remember one time I went on a date with this girl, and uh, she she kept trying to have me fight the waiter. What? It was it was the weirdest okay, thing. Okay, how, 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 what did that look you like? You gotta, yeah, you gotta fucking yeah. give some context <laughs> yeah. to that. Oh my God. I'm about to just say the way he I put that bread down. You should knock his ass out. Yeah. This is the same story as the brick in the window. That's a, call, that's a, that's a callback, by the way. If y'all want, that's a callback, if y'all want that way. kind of shit, y'all got to sign up for the Patreon. Y'all got to subscribe, <laughs> motherfucker. That's a callback. Yo, if you're tuning into this episode, this is the callback Yo. 214. Okay, so what happened was. No, it was just like she was like, uh, after he left, she goes, Did you see how he looked at you at the end? I, like, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God. Do you see how he looked at you at the end? I'm like, huh? What? And she's I'm like, sorry. yeah, he, he looked at you like. And here's the thing. Who do you picture of this girl right now? Um, oh, oh, ethnically, what do you picture? Well, I, guess, I actually guess that I'm actually race. not going white. I'm actually not going white. Yeah, no. Okay. Josh, you said white. I said, ooh, oh, shit. Now I'm having second thoughts. I'm, gonna I'm go going with my first, Indian. I'm, I'm going white. Ooh, damn. Cambodian. I was closer. Okay, <laughs> I was closer. <laughs> That's what, Cambodian. Who's guessing Cambodian? 
Yeah, have, but Cambodia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cambodian breast milk. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing I know about Cambodia is the breast milk. <laughs> A1. That's 100% breast milk. Uh, she was <laughs> born in Canada. Yeah, born in Canada. Cambodian nurse. You know how nurses are like nymphos, right? Mm. Nurse. Cambodian, which I, I'm not I'm not saying all Cambodians are like this, but I just like, it was nurses. the only time I ever been with a Cambodian. But she was just like, Did you see the way you looked at you? I'm like, No, what? And then at the end I pay and um, somehow I don't know <laughs> it was a first date. So I was like, you know what a you can't brush shit off too much yeah. because like you gotta you gotta look like you gotta look like if there was disrespect, I'm gonna handle yeah. it, right? Yeah. So now we leave and <laughs> she's like, she had us go back into the restaurant and I confronted the guy. Oh, no. <laughs> and she's next to me. And in my interaction with the guy, I could just feel she was the crazy one. Do you understand? Yeah, what I'm saying? Like, you, I, gotta I go mess. back to up to him. I'm like, yo, bro, what's up? Real quick, bro. And he's like, hey, what's up, man? You I forgot you to go, Ben? Or I'm like, hey. like, no, I just... I. Th- and I just remember walking out and being like, this bitch is fucking yeah. crazy. I, well, in, in, that mo- <laughs> in that moment with the white, you, start, you started asking yourself, what, what the fuck am I doing? The guy's Arab. I'm Sudani. I'm closer to him. She's got right, me fighting right. people closer what to me than fuck? her. Like, that, that, so that is the type of chaos that's out there. You know yeah. what I mean? Like she just, she just likes to have a guy maybe scrap. For her, or be in a position Ooh. to have to. I don't know what it Feel was. Prote- but I, 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 it w- this is not like a. a <laughs> this is not like a thing of, to cast on all people who say this, but. To feel protected. Cambodians, all right, boys. I know, right? But no, but to feel protected, because I, I ran across a lot of women who are like, oh my God, I just want to feel protected. I'm like, what exactly do you mean by that? Because, like, in my mind, you know, I'm going to keep you out of danger. Like, don't put me in no fucking shit to keep you out of danger from. Like, we're not going to be in the shit in the first place. Exactly. That's creating the chaos <laughs> to get you out. That's what we're talking about. And I was like, "What?" I didn't. I didn't realize your life was like a Key and Peele sketch. Like that shit is fucking hilarious. Yeah, no, that's 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 really fucking good. <laughs> I didn't even remember this until this whole conversation. Fucking started memory off. unlocked. Oh, Maybe even shit. ten years ago. Buy the yeah. card game, motherfuckers. And like that's that, what this See, deck will get you. It's a very small business. It's, it's, it's a very, very small. Very small. The smallest possible business. Oh <laughs> shit! Very small. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just. I'm just saying. Go uh, easy, y'all. This this is not in the card pack, but what if you're dating a girl? Every time she takes her socks off, she sniffs them. That's Ooh. very specific. Yeah, right. Have you experienced that? What is that? I have not, but I always because sure. I always sniff my sock when I take it off, and what? I'm always in my head. <laughs> yeah, I do. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's kind of. You guys don't. You guys don't. What the no? Fuck? Unless I, I unless <laughs> unless I know my shit is rot. Like unless I know it's been like a long day. I need to test something. I'm, I don't know. I just, you know, just, just to to keep, you know, just to keep tabs on your body. I don't know what it is, but I, you know, I'll take so you, you, I don't even you think about it. You, you want to know what your girl thinking, hamper. pretty much. You know, I always think, I'm like, man, if a girl did that in front of me, what would I do? I'd be kind of turned so, on the I first. What guys, would you do? You, what would you do since you've thought about this? Mm. I would be disgusted. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, I, would be, I would be disgusted, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd be, be kind of turned on, like, the first time. Like, huh. Have you ever What's smelled you? your sock in front of a significant other? Like, have you ever did that in front of a girl? Well, not you know, I've been with my girl for years now, so yeah, that don't, yeah, that don't, that don't count. Before, yeah. before that, yeah. no, no, fuck no. Okay. But like, you know, I might, I might, you know, take the boxes off, hit them with a look at the see what you know what I mean. Just it's been a long. Day. Oh shit, okay. Yeah. But, you know, you guys oh, have been shit. there. You looking at me like this, but we've all been there. We've all been there. But <laughs> if I definitely didn't do that shit in front of them in the dating time, definitely not. Definitely not. But you no. did go, maybe you did go and confront that fucking waiter. I'm sorry, that shit is fucking oh. hilarious. <laughs> I don't, bro. I was horny, bro. I, young in my twenties, I was like, yo, I think I gotta fight this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get some I'm pussy tonight, seal, like yo. If I'm gonna seal the deal tonight, I might have to fight. He's on. He's in the his shit. He's in the fucking group chat, and the homies is fucking hyping him up. And niggas is like, it's like, man, I think you gotta fucking fight it. Like I seen her. I seen the pick, bro. I seen the pick. Yo, should I wait till the shift's over or just come at him right now? <laughs> <laughs> yo, when you done son uh, when's this place closing to two and you, you're at what two 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 thirty oh shit okay uh <laughs> well, are you working tomorrow no, no okay, uh, okay. Uh, I'm, uh, see, I'm just saying well, i'll fucking be yeah, here well, the day after you, bro yeah exactly. <laughs> i'm fucking yo no nah, man my nah, god crazy this, bro. well you guys never had some women just like in 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 it's in uh muslim culture when the devil whispers in your ear it's called weswis so there's all this like in the in the Quran, it says like the devil will whisper all the wes in your ear. Do you ever had a girl like just 
and dating just fuck with your head a little bit? I have 100% been egged on to fight a guy by a girl. But it was but it was much more it was I think much more clear cut circumstances than like what was it? It was it, it was, was probable cause. It was actual probable cause. She was like, This guy's being through your brick this, through your window. This guy's being real aggressive with me. Like, can you like go tell him oh. to stop kinda 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 stuff? Oh mm. so I didn't feel I didn't You're feel like, any type of way about having that conversation. Gotcha, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You're like that Terry Crews looking motherfucker. Okay. And it was yeah. it was a nigga that was substantially bigger than me. And I'm not a small person. I was like I'm like, wow. I got you. Okay. Well, if if you say so. Look, okay. This guy you're just up there breathing all that air up there, huh? Okay. This guy's this guy's an old lineman and I'm like a fullback. You know, it's like it's like different kind of levels to this shit. Um Did you confront them? I did confront them in like the very like cordial like hey, hey man hey, I, bro I, hey, hey chill bro and he was like all right man like it was it was very much like he was he did the typical nigga shit like you know i didn't mean to disrespect you you know i was cool disrespecting your girl but i ain't know her nigga was standing right here i ain't want to disrespect you my yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah so like it was kind of it was kind of like as, resolved he's like that. As unfortunate as that is, uh, in terms of the overall zeitgeist of the culture, in terms of you know how women are perceived, my as a as a nigga in that moment, you gotta be grateful. Like, whoo! Thank God I got some respect out here in these streets, God damn! I did not want to fight the this way, nigga. The way you just described that took me back to the Boondocks so much. By the way, as a nigga in the zeitgeist, let me just. Remember a nigga moment? Right. A nigga moment is when ignorance overwhelms the mind of an otherwise logical nigga. Word man. for word, bar for bar. I see you with the <laughs> Like the way you described it, though, bro, that straight up took me back to the boondocks. <laughs> that was so good. I love that. Even the guy that you confronted knew you had to say something because of- That's like, that's what it was. He was like- You know what I mean? He's like, okay, bro. All right. I see you. Okay. Yeah. Exactly like, how that shit was. I, I, I can respect yeah. that. Yeah, okay. My fault, G. Yeah. Yeah, you you got you got lucky this time, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn, that's fucked you're up. You just lucky it wasn't a a club night at the end of close to last call, and he didn't have anything. That's when that that's when that aggression really hits the peak. You know what I mean? That's when you're gonna fight. No, nah, man, my cousin taught me some real shit, man, a while back, and like you know, he with the shits. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, you know, got he next he a nigga that actually hit the bird line a couple times. Had niggas on okay. the team on the payroll. What's happening? And he taught me like, man, bro, like sometimes you gotta you gotta listen to your head instead of your heart. You know, he was out, out in Atlanta and some niggas had said some slick ass crazy shit about the girl that he was with. And then they doubled down. It was like, man, fuck that nigga that you with too. We'll beat his ass. And it was like two niggas. He was like, man, I'm about to go back and fuck these dudes up. But then he realized it was like a couple of these motherfuckers. So He's faced with it's a, a trap. decision. Do I be like, oh, nigga, not me and my woman. <laughs> Stand behind me. Or mm -mm. do I just mm -mm. walk away? Either way, we fucking Either way. Like, <laughs> either way. Like, no, man. You get back in the car and you're so thankful that you did. You know yeah. I mean? It ain't worth it, like, bro. Like, it's a dead ass. I don't, like, it's, unless. And you guys are in America, too. Keep in mind, in Canada, that's nobody, what I was gonna nobody's say. got a pistol. Nobody's got a pistol. Unless you're going to go, literally go and. You you know you got work and you're doing work you're gonna have it. but as far as altercations regular altercations no one brings out a gun in Canada that's a gun especially in fucking Georgia that shit is and it's work it's bro. I would say in Atlanta it's probably less common but I would say in Kentucky it regular motherfuckers carry like so yeah. soccer moms like carry into the grocery store like I I just assume that everyone has a gun. Like that, yeah. like that's not like I'm just like I'm just like I'm like she has a gun, he has a gun. The fucking 18 year old probably has a fucking AR-15 in his trunk because you can do that shit like here. Like I'm just like everybody fucking has a gun, so I be chilling. Like you gotta push me, you gotta endanger like life and well being for me to get to a point where it escalates to that level. And at that point, I think the guns become even more dangerous because I don't think they de-escalate the situation at all. Mm -mm. It's more like. I need to shoot first is the is the mindset that a lot of people come up because like if you if both of us got a gun yeah like some, you I know what I mean like who shoots first um, yeah yeah because yeah, I mean yeah yeah pretty much because it's super easy to pull a damn trigger but it's hard to goddamn you know pull punches fire all punches I should say or like if all I right. point somebody like we talked about that shit at, um when I was out not too long ago it was like you throw a punch like you one hundred they one hundred percent need to go down. Like that needs to be lights out. That needs to be the best fucking punch you ever threw. Cause again, <laughs> like 
Or you're just inviting vi- like full on violence to the end because now they're embarrassed because they got punched. Exactly. So now they got to do way more damage on you. And now you just took two bullets to the chest, and I'm like, God damn. <laughs> Yeah. Fighting hard in the motherfucker, bro. Like, you looking like uh, Usher in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Riddle those bullets. All right, we got time. For, I think we got time for like one more. Um, I'm going to do something light because, you know, we don't have a ton of time. But we'll go to how to find out your actual attractive attractiveness number. I was watching this video. You did? All right, hold on, man. I, I, a little bit of it. Go back and... I didn't finish yeah, it. Yeah, I'm about to pull this bitch up. She's doing math and shit. It was like a Jay-Z song. She said, average some shit out. Watch, watch, you'll see. You know what I'm saying? I was watching something on TikTok, right? This guy said, everybody in the world, in terms of attraction, is between a three and a seven. And the reason why a lot of people are single is because they think that they're more appealing than what society deems them as attractive. So you might be a four, yeah. but in your mind, you're an eight. So you're going to go to the people who are eights, right. but the eights don't want you because technically you're a four. I said, okay, that's fair. This guy then said, if you want to figure out what the society standard you are, you need to average out the range of the men or women that you have dated previously so if you have dated a four a four a six seven then you median it in society's eyes you're a five so i checked my database right Right. and what numbers did you get numbers that can ruin my (laughs) self-esteem okay yes she she was like oh my god i'm I'm not i'm not how this shit popping yeah Okay, well, no, I, that makes sense. Now that I watched it again, I guess that. But then it says you're as hot as who you've dated, which is not not physically. That's not the yeah, truth, it's, def- it's definitely not true. Yeah, right. Because you might have some. You ever see uh, the like the average? Not a, not not one person. Not a, not not an outlier. Yeah, but I know. I know some guys that were like, I know my one buddy, all high school and college, beast wrestler. This guy always ugly guy, ugly Irish fuck. <laughs> All right, but this guy always bagged the hottest chicks for as long as I knew, mm. and just the confidence and the physique and whatever you wanna, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not always true. You may you may have like a confidence that brings you a lot higher aesthetically than what you could get had you not had it, just based on physical looking. You know what I mean? If you're if you're tall, if I can get my Eddie Button, though. tall absolutely. But if, is I, huge. if I if I can get my Eddie Button on real quick and to bring mm. a little bit of nuance to this conversation and the way that we. Uh, View preach my brother and the preach. way that we view <laughs> the attractiveness of mm. other people in relation to, to testify the male, female, and uh, they themselves gaze. Because you could be outwardly butt ass ugly but beautiful on the inside and have all the characteristics and traits that would make you a 10 out of 10 in terms of attractiveness to other people. That might have been what your wrestling nigga was doing, he might have been funny than a motherfucker, outgoing, goddamn. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, and, swinging yeah, yeah, yeah. the bat every and time. They, and they specify attraction too, right? They didn't. Mm-hmm. They didn't say. They didn't say handsome or pretty, right? So yeah. I do think. I do think that attraction is a total package kind of thing. Subjective. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all, I, mean, all of it, I mean, all of it is subjective. You know what well, I mean? Let, let me. Okay, so I'm not really a huge fan of. Um, "Quote unquote bad bitches" and like that that whole aesthetic of a "quote unquote" personality. Quote, nah, <laughs> "quote unquote" personality. I don't like intelligent like women who got substance. Nah, fuck all that. <laughs> but just like, but not for real, like bad bitches, like because we all know like what that aesthetic looks like. We when we think of like a real like a bad bitch, like we all have an image that comes to our head. I'm not necessarily attracted to that Kate image. Blanchett. That's not attractive to me. Like she Kate, could be beautiful, dead ass beautiful, but it's not necessarily attractive to me. Like sexy red or all these. Chicks. That's not. Uh, we just that's what i'm saying so you said we all had an image and we all said like very different things so but mm, but i get i get fair. what you're saying but you said a bad bitch yeah. what do you think of cardi b like what, what are we talking here like a certified megan like you know what i mean like <laughs> that's a bad bitch but there ain't no bad bitch you know what i'm saying <laughs> no <laughs> boy i tell you i want that oh um, shoot yourself in the foot for that huh like a, <laughs> boy i tell you i might donate my left nut and get it i might palm my left nut and buy it back after the after the thing is over, oh, like I'm, I'm just thinking like a typical like Instagram like baddie, like something simple. You know what I'm saying? Like just 
a lot of outward <laughs> makeup appearance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just, In terms just of traditionally sexy tradition yeah. by traditional, just, just but like simple, just like your average everyday team. You In know terms of how you like, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In terms of how you think about just it, just a certified IG blue check bad bitch. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's, all That's all I'm saying. You know, I'm saying. I'm, you know I'm a Christian. Yeah. You know I'm a Christian. <laughs> Like, what? <laughs> Look, I'm probably the wrong person to ask about this. But I <laughs> no, but I know what you mean. By the way, and also all of the stuff we're saying, you can only achieve a 10. You can't, you know, soft skills. Soft skills can get you up the ladder, right? Yeah. But they can't go past nine, nine and a half. I agree. But I agree. A 10? You can't funny right? your way to we a 10. We have to risk. Yeah. Yeah. You can't funny <laughs> your way to a 10. <laughs> I don't care how charismatic or benevolent you fucking are. I don't care how much you donate or you're at the soup kitchen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, niggas, you a can't. Ten is a, a ten is a ten. Niggas, you, you can't can money be, your way to a ten neither. By the way, niggas, just letting y'all know that too. You can't money your way to a ten either. What's a ten then? What's a, if you can't money your way to a ten? Then what's a ten? Because you can money your way to a lot of shit, but what's a ten? If we gonna say but that, but keep in mind nine and a, you can money away or you can all your way up to all these to a nine and a half. Yeah, I, and I, a nine I would. and a half gets you in, in regular life. A nine and a half gets you everything. There are a almost no like, nine and a half. A ten is like a comet. A ten, a ten is like a comet. A ten doesn't you know exist. I mean? Like that's that's You're the like, unicorn. Damn. And if you find it, and you can't hold it, she's not a ten. Right? It's gone. That's because they gonna, they, they don't exist. I think tens exist. Damn, so like, here's the thing, and that's what I was gonna get into. So like. And I think that she was being um, hyperbolic when she was discussing like the ranking situation where she was talking about some everybody is between a three and a seven. So if everybody's between a three and a seven, that just means that three yeah, is effectively a one. Is gone. Yeah, that just means yeah, three yeah, yeah, is effectively exactly. a one and seven is effectively a 10, which means that somebody's a 10 and somebody's a one. But I, I know that that's not what she really meant, but I did just want to point that out. But I think I think you can find 10s. In, a tr in total attractiveness, right? Like, I don't think that necessarily, like, everybody that I would consider a 10 is the most beautiful or the most handsome person, like, ever. But, like, mm. I definitely think that they are pretty enough or handsome enough to, like, those other package features to get them to that to that state. And I do yeah. think that it's extremely subjective. Like, extremely, ex extremely externally beautiful by damn near anyone's metrics. And also, great personality, great health financial situation it's on point down to earth like I, everything I, that you could i know i know women like that you know what i mean like i'm not i'm not saying I, I, i'm not saying i know a hundred of them i'm not saying <laughs> i know 50 of them but i but know they exist they're yeah, out yeah, there. yeah yeah like let's let's put let's put some names to it just for the sake of people at home that don't have the imagination halle berry late 20s 10 where do we put let's it? go boom 10. 10 easy right right easy mm -hmm. money uh, yeah yeah uh, oh so sophia longero whatever her name is Early age? Have you seen her in Soul Plane? Oh, have, Eva have Longoria. You, Eva Longoria. You, what? Whatever her name is. So the one in Modern Family. Hispanic. Eva Longoria. Sophia, yeah, yeah. Sophia Vergara. Oh, Sophia Vergara. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Have, did you see her when she was in Soul Plane? Like yes. in early two thousand? Yes. Nah, I wouldn't. Let me. Lord have mercy, bro. Yeah. Lord have mercy, bad, bro. Bad. Bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we. Ten. That's a ten. I met a girl in real life. Uh, like about a year or so ago, like on a modeling thing, and I was fucking up like the 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 modeling shit because I was like just so in tune, and just like with her. I'm I'm I'm, I'm just like I'm just in I'm just in trap. But she was like gorgeous for one, like tall, like body. But she was down to earth. I think I recall. I think I recall this. I think yeah, I recall yeah, this. Yeah. Like I think oh, I was, yeah yeah. yeah. I, you were enchanted on that I episode enchanted, that night. I was enchanted, like I'm. I was enchanted. He's got birds flying over Bro, his head. Like, I'm like, that. like, I'm like I, I, hey, uh, you know, let's let's exchange Instagrams. Uh, you know, if you want to, she's like, yeah, for sure. Never reached out to her because I like, man, you too bad for me. Goddamn, I think I could have. She, I definitely could have got a date, but yeah. But anyway, and I, would, I yeah, and I would also push back on like that. Your yeah. that your rank your rating is based on the median or even the average of who you date. Because I will say, and I've talked about this at length, that I've consistently been able to punch above my weight. And I'm not even just talking about, again, like the the physical, you know, you know, pretty handsome like dichotomy. I'm saying even overall package, I think I've been able to punch above my weight pretty consistently. So I would say that my rating is substantially lower than the average or median of, 
you know, the women that I've been able to date historically and yeah, by that like, system, I, like I know you that. walking around thinking you're a nine. Yeah, I, yeah, right? and I and I and I definitely don't think I'm a fucking nine. Like I'm not stupid. Yeah. So like I, yeah. I feel like you can have some level of um, self awareness. Awareness, yeah, exactly. To yeah. to understand that sometimes there is a, a discrepancy between what you've been able to punch above your weight to achieve based on luck or circumstance or whatever, and what you actually look like, even what you bring to the table, like all those kinds of things. And I feel like that's a that's a very easy thing for me to do, but I can also see how that can be hard for some other people to do. Yeah, especially if it went the other way around, right? Yeah. What if you keep going below what you should be getting? Then you're like, fuck. Oh, well. You're like, fuck, I keep Which, getting- Which is what she brought I'm up, an, right? I'm an That's eight. What... I'm an eight. I don't give a fuck. I'm an eight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Like in your head, yeah. you're right? What if you really I are think... an eight but keep getting sixes on purpose? Like you then... just continually punch below. But you know what it is? Because I remember when I was like in the dating game, Here's the thing. The lower the number you go, the faster you think you'll get what you want, right? Isn't that the game? Isn't that the name of the game? That is you're like, that's fair. You're like, you're a six, so you better not have any resistance. That's... You know what I mean? Like, whoa. You, look, man, you, no, you, no, no, you no, no, no. Relax, relax, relax. Hey, don't put it, don't put it like that. Don't... For Christ's sake, you're a complete sociopath. Don't interrupt. That's not how I interpret it. I interpret right, it on, right. some, on some on some I'm a sociopath type shit. On some right. 48 laws of power, like <laughs> manipulation. Like type never game. go against not the even, master. Not even. <laughs> now, if you've completed all the other steps properly up to this point, she'll naturally want to take the relationship to the next level. Relax, boys. You guys took it on some fucking. It's okay, Machiavelli. Like, just go ahead awesome. and do what you're gonna do, man. Jonathan Major <laughs> yes. shit there for a second. <laughs> I, I am a great right, man. I am a great man. <laughs> I am a great man. And if I'm gonna do great things. Be down on her knees no. in, like, yo, in front of me. Yo, what do they say? If you don't get to home base by the first date, that's fine. That's the name of the game. Second, third date. That's right. If she's a ten, I'm waiting ten dates. I'm waiting eleven dates. If she's a five or six. And by the second day, I'm not getting any. I'm gone. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. I can understand the logic. You're, you're playing way too hard to get. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can understand the logic. You're playing way How too do you guys hard. not? I mean, guys, I mean, look, look. I don't, a numbers game. I, like, I've never even thought about we're it. We're literally this whole thing. segment is numbers. <laughs> Alvin, this whole is explicitly numbers. You are. I've great. never even thought You've about. You won it that before. round. <laughs> it's right? like no, no. But Josh, hear me out on this, right? If she. If she is bad and she, and it's like it's been the fourth day dinner great let's go back to your place for some you know like a nightcap no ah uh, okay all right I'll, yeah, you know, yeah, okay, I'll text you get home safe you know good night <laughs> God, whatever you're beautiful and I blah, blah blah but bro if she's like you know she was like some hurting chick that's funny sick she's funny and we hung out one time we hung out two times and it's like you can like <laughs> and then she doesn't give it to you on the third you're like you're not that funny <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> you're not that funny i'm gone you're not that funny for me to stick around i don't give a fuck and it's funny yeah like, that's the truth whether like, you agree with me or not this is no, how we no, all I, think look, I, I get and it this because, thing hey, is, it's hilarious because you're a comedian and you're just like you're just not even funny to me. Like you're just like fucking yeah, hilarious. Like, so I have a fucking license on funny, and you ain't it. Like not that funny, goddamn. But it's no. like, I know yeah, funny. Funny is what I do. Funny is what I am. Imagine back in the day. Yeah, funny is what I am, and you are not that. Nor are you attractive. Goodbye. Like what the fuck? <laughs> I can. <laughs> That's some. I can definitely see like a younger a boss like getting that shit off like to one of these bad chicks that just wouldn't give up draws. Like you know what? I'm you know, tired you know, of playing bro, these games. You, uh, you should have heard how confident I was when I had hair, bro. Ooh, Disgusting. Disgusting. Line up, fresh line up, bro. I'd say some wild I shit. Mean, I mean, shit, like, if it, I'm just like, yo, if the vibe ain't there, like, if I don't feel like you're mutually attracted to me, like, if we couldn't just, like, kiss at, you know, like, at any moment, not at any moment, but, like, if... If like the if like if I don't feel like that vibe, the rate of progress. The, I mean, like the rate of progress, but like also just like just the little intricacies of like interactions, like touching on me, or like yeah, looking deeply exactly. into my eyes and like getting close to me. Like you just got your face extremely close to Signs. mine. To where exactly. if I just, you know what I mean? Like that's that's sort of exactly. that level of intimacy. If I don't feel that, I'm not. I don't give a fuck how goddamn bad or cold you is. Lies. No, Lies. no, no. I don't know. If you, but, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? You've but, got, you've you know, got on some dates with some ones where. 
you guys are this far apart the whole yeah, time. Yeah, then I'm, like, not, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, time, no, we'll like you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, next time we'll be this close. Yeah, right, right. I mean, right. Like, I mean, but you know, you're wishful. You're wishful. You know, after you know, like if there's just just gotta be like a vibe and a chemistry. Like if it's, if that's not there, then I'm not pursuing nothing. After that point, we can still kick it because I might really enjoy your company. I might really enjoy your you know your your perspective, your humor, your personality. Just because you know I like female energy. I love having conversations with women. But like on some fucking type tip, if I don't feel that vibe, like a mutual attraction there, I'm not gonna. I'm just. I'm putting you in the friend zone, really. Like well, you might already have me there, but in my mind's like, all right, well that's that's the, that's the homie, unless until like maybe one yeah. night, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not pressing. I'm not pressed over that. Now I'm wondering. I'm like, have I was I too aggressive back in the day? <laughs> Fuck! Like is some stories gonna come out of me. Fuck. I know. That, they say they say the thing that what are they the the thing that's gonna take you down already happened. Isn't that what they say? Mm. Yeah, if, I haven't if heard they, that, the, actually. If they don't say it, they should say it, because that shit's smooth I know, right? Like, I, know, I like, haven't they heard should that say it now. What The thing that's going to take you down, you already did. I, I, someone that's, I'm not making this up. Like, uh, just with regards to, like, all the, in the Me Too thing. They're like, whatever whatever mm. you did, you already did. Oh, you know, my God, shit. yeah. Yeah. It, that's all, yeah. I mean, because, like, no one's perfect. And no one, if you're not someone of... Notoriety or like some very small clout or whatever. No a one very gives small a business, like very small business, yeah, very very <laughs> small business. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no one gives a uh, fuck, fuck to actually expose your dirt, and then even if your dirt was exposed, still no one's gonna give a fuck. Except maybe that 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 goddamn job at Walmart you got, but then that's still gonna be like a big ass fucking thing. But but then the second you do, then there's so much currency with a bad story. You know what I mean? Like. Like, look at uh, Louis C.K. No one said nothing until he started doing arenas consistently. Yeah. Once he started doing arenas, all the stories came go. to take him down. Look at Matt Reif. He's the best. He's the best. Matt He's the Reif, best. Yeah. Netflix, fuck him. Fuck Matt. People love to build up and tear down. He bro. also changed. Uh, Matt Reif also changed his swag, right? He used to do, like, that, that work in the audience kind of shit. And I think that he's really good at that. And then he started trying to do more, like, traditional comedy. And he's just not funny. No, no, no. See, like yeah. it, it happened. No, it because this happened like damn. We gotta, we gotta close this bitch out in a second. But it, <laughs> it happened like damn near in conjunction because he was still doing like the whole working, the, working the crowd thing. Like still very successful on that. And then like, boom, Netflix. And then he released a special that. Re- I mean, this was by his own, you know, by his own goddamn sword. And he was just talking about shit that wasn't funny. And then like was just ill informed. I don't even think he had bad just intentions, but yeah, just what, whatever you was trying to do, you missed the mark, and it would turn out being uh, offending a lot of people, and they got a lot of people t- to turn on him, but they turned quick, and then oh, everything yeah. after that. Quick as fuck. The whole thing was six months. You're the right. Thing. That's him, crazy. The whole thing. The, the, when's the album, when's the last time you heard his name? I bet you it wasn't In this a positive month. It wasn't. It wasn't. I bet you it wasn't this it hasn't month, been since the, It hasn't ago? been the fucking, since the fucking special dropped, yeah. But on the way up? Every day, ten times you heard his name, yeah. right? On the every on the day, TL, I'm like in was, comedy. Yeah. People are like, "Yo, you know Matt Rife? You know Matt Rife? People that don't know anything about comedy, Matt Rife, he's a Taylor Swift of comedy." And then when he did this, the way he went down, me watching it from a third party point of view blew my mind. The speed up and the speed down. And the problem was he kept putting out crowd work shit, and now everyone is coming to his shows yelling all show because they think he only does crowd work mm-hmm. so we can't even do jokes so now i think what he's trying to do is he's really trying to recondition his audience to be like i do jokes whether you like these jokes or not come to my shows expecting jokes don't be constantly yelling because that's what was happening because mm-hmm. he was only putting out crowd work and people were just yelling yelling and nothing was really happening yeah that's that thing man you know you catch that you catch that uh that little that little thing that's like oh shit it's successful it might not be for the best long term but Let's keep doing it. And with that being said, everybody, good people, ladies and gentlemen, theys, thems, chickens, dogs, ducks, as Manny Fresh would say, it's been the show. It's been your boys. It's Josh. It's been Alvin. It's been the illustrious Abbas Wahab. Thanks for having me, boys. Man, most definitely. Thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget, if you see a comedian picking a venue where they know there's going to be some smoke and they could just get some, you know, some clout, some attention from to sell out some more venues, then, you know, hey, you might be seeing a red flag. But if you sniffing your own socks in front of your new girl or your, <laughs> own, or your new significant <laughs> other just unprovoked, goddammit, it's probably you Nasty. that's waving the red flag. 
God darn. Um, <laughs> don't forget to like, uh, comment, subscribe. Um, shine up. Uh, Click the notification bell. Um, Alvin, help me out here, my brother. I can never just remember like all the great shit that we're doing. Yeah, become members in in all available platforms. You know, pick, take your pick, man. We're on Spotify. Take you can pick. get memberships on YouTube, assuming that works now. Uh, Patreon. <laughs> it's available. been working. It's been you know some people just need to do it from a computer versus their versus their mobile. I think that's the thing. But yes, yes, fair enough. <laughs> But yes, so yes, please become a member um, where you can get, gain access into all sorts of bonus content. Join the lives. And uh, yeah, it's been your boys. A boss, where can they find you? Where can the good people find you? Plug your shit, my guy. Yo, just follow the socials. A boss Wahab, A B B A S W A H A B. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I drop stand up, I drop funny little random shits and. America, look out for me. Hopefully, I'll be doing my inaugural U.S. tour this year. Uh, it's called the Wallahi America Tour. Wallahi. Look out for that soon. Good shit. That's it. Good shit. Yeah. That's been it, good people. We will see y'all next week. All right. Peace. Peace, peace. All right. We can stop the locals. All right. Thank you.